Not quite the same as, as John's baptism, but John's baptism of repentance was a way to, re, to prepare people for the forgiveness and the joy of the salvation. Today, we lit what color candle additionally? A pink one. That doesn't mean today's Barbie Sunday. It, it, what it does mean is that today is joyful. And like, like uh, Paul writes in our epistle lesson, rejoice always. Wouldn't that be a great passage to read every morning when you first get up? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, on the weekend days and on your work days, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from that which is evil. What a jo great way to begin the day. But today we celebrate the joy that Christ has come with him and he brings his salvation with him. John, of course, he understood this and he makes us a bold witness. John is the Advent man. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Get a cape for him. He's the Advent man. He's the one uh, who has quite an image, you know, in his camel's hair and his leather belt and his diet's not the greatest, you know, honey and wild locusts. And, you know, he's quite a, a harsh and stark figure, and his message is, is kind of harsh. Repent. Uh, and, and when and some of the religious leaders come out and, and they uh, want to know what G John is doing, he says to them, you brood of vipers, who told you to come out here and to repent of your sins? That's the kind of bold witness that John was. But John was human too. John may have had his doubts now and then. Remember when John was taken prisoner and, and put into the dungeon and uh, eventually he was executed, he was beheaded. But when, when he's in this dungeon, he might have had some doubts. Satan, I'm sure, worked very hard on him. The, the one who was the bold witness out in the Jordan now may have had doubts. He sends some of his disciples to Jesus, and he, he says, now go and ask Jesus who he is. Are you the one, or should we look for somebody else? And Jesus says, well, <laughs> look at, tell John what you see and what you hear. And today we look at what Jesus has done and what he teaches, and he certainly is the one. Today we have that confidence and hope and that joy that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promised Messiah. He is the one who has come. Now, who are you? Somebody asks you, who are you? Well, you probably say, I'm uh, Bill. Got a lot of those here. Uh, I'm so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, well, no, but who are you? Well, I don't know. I'm a, and you'd go on. Maybe I'm a, a whatever your profession might be. I'm a farmer. I'm a, an engineer, whatever it might be. Um, no, but you are also a pointer. You and I are called to do exactly what John did. Maybe not to run around and baptize people in the, uh, the, the uh, Buffalo Creek or something, but no, we are called to point the way to the one who has come already and who will come again. You and I are called to be the instruments just as John was. I, I, I don't know why I thought about it. There was something on yesterday on the news about uh, these weight loss drugs, and they may be some huge breakthrough and so forth. But if, if you knew of some medication or some kind of uh, 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 pill or something that people could take to help them with their problems, would you point them to it? Would you say, hey, look, I got to tell you, I found this medication, and boy, this stuff works. If you've got arthritis, you put a little bit of this on it, or you take this pill, boom, it's all gone. Or would you just say, boy, they are, it's too bad they're in a lot of pain, uh, you know, but uh, they'll figure it out for themselves. Well, you and I have been given 
the, the medication of the grace of God and his love in sending Jesus into the world. And we are called to point to him and to tell people, repent, just like John did, and this is the one to follow. And as you confess your sins, he will forgive you and he will bless you. You and I are called to point out his holy word to take that word out to people, to point out the, the gifts that God gives us, the sacrament of holy baptism, the sacrament of, of his presence with us in his body and blood, holy communion. And we are sent out now to go and be the John the Baptists in our community even today. Now, you don't have to change your, your clothing style. You don't have to wear uh, rough uh, camel's hair cloth or whatever and any of those things, and you can still eat your McDonald's burgers. You don't have to eat locusts, okay? But what you do need to do, and what I need to do, is we need to realize that's why we're here, to point out that Jesus is the one. Not even, you know, a lot of times we think our, our calling is to fill the pews. Well, this is where people can get nurtured and fed in the word, of course. That's a good thing. This is where people can express that unity that they have in baptism and, and come together in, in a common faith and receive Christ in his body and blood. These are all good things, but the goal is to point out people to believe and know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's who we are, and that's what we are called to do, to point and prepare the way for Jesus, who has promised and who will return. In the town of uh, Colmar, in Alsace, uh, part of the, the country of France, there's a beautiful painting. I've never seen it. I've seen prints or pictures of it by M Matthias Grunwald, and it depicts the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, there are many, many uh, depictions of Jesus on the cross. Now, like most of them, Jesus is in the center. He's on the cross. He's suffering and dying as he's crucified. On his right is his mother, Mary. And the way this artist depicts her is, is, is she's collapsed in grief and agony and sorrow over witnessing what happens to her son, she collapses. And, and the beloved disciple John, to whom Jesus commends uh, her, he's behind her to help her. And then to the left is Mary Magdalene, and she's kneeling and she's praying. Now, nothing too out of the ordinary about that, is there? That's kind of what you'd expect uh, to see in a picture uh, about Jesus' crucifixion. But a little further to the left is John the Baptist. Now that's a little strange, isn't it? He'd already been executed. Historically, it's not accurate. John the Baptist could not have been at the crucifixion. And at that far left, as you see John the Baptist, what do you think he's doing? He's pointing to the crucified Jesus Christ. Does that seem a little strange? Now, historically, it's, it's not accurate. But thematically and theologically, it's, it's beautiful. Because what John is doing, he's pointing to the one who dies for you and I and pays the price of our sins that we might know the pink candle, the joy of the salvation that he has given us. That's who we are too. Now, we are not called to just wait around for Jesus' return. If you go to the doctor's office, you go somewhere uh, and you have an appointment and you're waiting, what are you doing in the waiting room? Well, you might read something, you might watch something that they have on television or whatever, but you're just sitting there, right? You're not doing much. That's not what Advent is. That's not what we are called to do until Jesus returns to continue to stay faithful, yeah, 
but to point out and share that faith and that hope that we have in Jesus Christ as our Lord. May God bless us and enable us and move us to be his humble pointers to Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, in his name. Amen. And may the joy and the peace of that salvation that goes beyond our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith as we share him with others. Amen. We continue now as we gather the offerings and we join in singing the offertory hymn, hymn 350, stanzas one and three. Ransom come And my gracious receive I pray thee evermore as best I can. Savior, I will homage pay thee. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we ask his blessings on us to be his bold witnesses in the world today. And we also uh, include, uh, as we have for some time, various other petitions for members and, and so forth and for our community. We have a prayer request for also Linda Grotke, uh, but I don't know if she was in the hospital, it doesn't say, but she's home uh, and doing well. Please remain seated as we join in prayer. Because it is our Father's will for his children to pray, let us rejoice always, pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances. Gracious Father, when the time had fully come, you sent your Son into the world to bear our sin and to be our Savior. By his suffering and death, by his resurrection and ascension, and by his reign at your right hand and promise to come again, we are given joyful hearts and confidently bring our prayers before your throne of grace. Your kingdom is the eternal kingdom, O God, and we are blessed to witness to all peoples the saving work you have accomplished in Christ our Lord and King. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Mighty God, stretch forth your hand and defend your people from all effects of sin and death, giving victory over the enemy of darkness by shining into our world the light of your truth. Work in our midst as the mighty fortress of our lives, providing protection to those who labor for the benefit of others and to those who wear the uniform of our land. Grant wisdom to those who make, administer, and judge our laws and reach into every troubled corner of the world to bestow upon us your mercy and peace. Sing to him, sing praises to him. 
Savior of the nations, by our baptism into your death and resurrection, you clothe us with your righteousness and fill us with your spirit. You have enabled our hearts to believe and our mouths to confess your saving name. Lord Jesus, take away from us any fear or doubt, any hesitancy or reluctance to share with others the hope that is within us. Open doors of opportunity for us to be like John the Baptist, giving faithful testimony to you and preparing the way for your coming kingdom. Glory in his holy name. And great physician of body and soul, take great care of all of those who are suffering in physical pain, mental illness, emotional stress, and broken relationships. Comfort your people who are sad and lonely. Warm all troubled hearts with the assurance of your never failing presence. Grant wholeness and healing to those in need. We give you thanks, Lord God, in all circumstances, including our struggles. For we know that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you and have been called according to your purpose. Seek the Lord and his strength. And great physician of body and soul, we lift up before you today and ask for continued prayers and blessings of healing and well-being be poured out upon Laura Lee and Cindy, for Beth and John, for Anita and for Lauren, for Pastor Stephen, and also for Linda. We ask that you would be with them and continue to in work in them the healing of their bodies and their souls. Lord, in your mercy. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless us in the closing days of this Advent season as we too are preparing ourselves to come and celebrate the joy and the hope of the Christ child on Christmas. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for a blessing that we be about what you have called us and who you have called us to be, your witnesses, to be a bold uh, witness and testimony to the joy of Jesus and that we be about the mission of the church as Faith Lutheran here in the Elma community, that we might be a church that shares that hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would bring peace to many who are uh, struggling and in conflict and those who are consequences of, of war, who have been the victims of war in, in Israel and uh, in the Gaza uh, Strip. Uh, we pray for those in the Ukraine and Russia, for many areas around the globe and Africa, and even in our own neighborhood. Just down the street, Lord, we pray that you would be with our neighborhood in, in the aftermath of a, a horrible murder, and we pray that uh, you would work in homes where there is conflict and strife, that you would res bring a resolution of, of harmony and peace. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, Lord, we commend into your hands. And we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, waiting in joyful expectation for your coming kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise now as we join in confessing our common faith in our participation in the sacrament. We also join in confessing our common faith in the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary 
and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, giving witness to the true light who comes to shine upon us with grace and truth. And blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus. Confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and to drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us now as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not <clears throat> into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
post-communion thanksgiving. And let us pray, gracious Lord, your word says to us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. We joyfully give you thanks for the blessings offered to us in the body and blood of our Savior. We pray in the name of our coming King, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated now as the elder shares a few of the announcements for the day. Good morning. Uh, a few announcements this morning. Uh, as Pastor pointed out, there will be uh, on the 24th, 9 a.m., uh, our fourth Sunday in Advent service. And the 24th at 7 p.m. will be our Christmas Eve service. And at uh, the 10 a.m. Christmas Day service on the 25th. Uh, first Sunday after uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve prayer and praise, 1231 at 9 a.m. Uh, Lad is always looking for stuff. Uh, you can see Lois Rogers or Linda Roselle, and also Fish is looking for canned ravioli this month. Uh, poinsettias are due to be ordered by today, and Karen and Dave Blackman are not here. There will be no Bible study this morning. Thank you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Have a wonderful day. I'm sorry. <laughs> our, our song for the end of the service is 376 stanzas one and two, four and five. And it'll be in the hymn book at 376. Thank you.